Hello, welcome to another episode of Machine Learning Made Simple. Today we will talk about the Inception uh, V1, uh, the version 1 of the Inception module and uh, later on about Google Net which was the neural network that was built using Inception at its core. Now these legendary, these are both very legendary ideas for uh, machine learning and in particular image classification and detection because what they did is they fundamentally altered the way neural networks were designed. And I'll be talking more about this later, but just know that these were very paradigm shifting modules based on very interesting math. And they were able to outperform their competition while also being much cheaper than that. So before I proceed, if you like this kind of content, please do hit the like button. This helps the YouTube algorithm know that this is a good video and it shares it with more people. So a like would be very, very much appreciated. And now to the slides. Okay, so as mentioned, uh, this is a very different uh, kind. Of, this was a revolutionary kind of architecture because before, before inception, you know, quite literally prior to inception, um, all of our uh, neural networks were basically made better. We improved performance by we add more layers, which is increasing depth, or add more neurons per layer, which would increase your width. And as you can see, that's a very brute force approach, and it becomes very expensive. Uh, and obviously, every time you add a neuron or in, a la in every layer, or in even in one layer, and you add uh, or you add uh, more layers, you're increasing the complexity exponentially because you have to rewire connections to every neuron from the previous layer to it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, obviously, uh, the other big problem is that uh, we can't infinitely add more depth because uh, deeper networks uh, tend to have very high overfitting. It's true for any big and complex network, but especially for very deep networks because uh, depth uh, generally equals a lot more complexity. So adding one layer exponentially increases the complexity because it adds way many more parameters and stuff. And uh, this leads to a much higher variance, which high variance, low bias is a condition for overfitting. So typically, High depth, very deep networks means a very good chance of an overfit. And the second part, uh, it is also hard to pass gradients uh, through the network. It's actually a very big problem with neural networks, and it's called the vanishing or the exploding uh, gradient problem, depending on what kind of a situation you have. So there's two problems, vanishing gradient and exploding gradient, which are based, both based on the similar concept, and I will be looking into them later. So as mentioned earlier, adding more parameters just makes it more expensive. Even if you add more to the same layer, you're basically doing the same thing. And lastly, uh, this, uh, it was based on this very interesting mathematical research. And I'm not going to read out the entire screenshot, but uh, feel free to pause. I'll go back to it later. But the important point from this is that for any complex data set, we can basically represent it as a very deep but very sparse neural network the solutions, that is, we can represent as a deep but sparse neural network. That means that not every uh, neuron in one layer has to be connected to another layer. And, uh, uh, but we would need a lot of layers. And this was proved under certain conditions. So uh, it doesn't extend to all conditions, but empirically speaking, this principle has held true very well in all sorts of different problems. So, um, you know, this might be a true statement, but it hasn't been proven yet. So in case one of you viewers uh, decides to find a go, go deeper into this and finds in interesting results based on their work, just know that I will be expecting a 10% finder's fee because I was the one that introduced you to this problem. So now we're actually going to break down the inception module itself. So at its core, it's a very simple idea. We have three different kinds of conv convolutions. You know, I'm not going to get too much into them because uh, they require another video altogether. So hit subscribe if you're interested in the upcoming convolution video. But uh, basically, you have three different kinds of convolution and you have a 3x3 three three max pooling. M max pooling, again, like the specifics I'm not going to get into, but it's a downsampling algorithm. So you take high dimensional data, like you take very precise, like if I give you a HD image, I, I want you to give me back a 144p image. And why you might want this is because 
you don't want your data to overfit. So if you give like the more abstract representations of your image, it's going to generalize better to more kinds of data. And also it's much less expensive. So for example, in autonomous cars, like self-driving cars, uh, use max pooling and other kinds of downsampling very heavily. So we pass it through this layer, which is all these uh, functions, and then we concatenate the results. So we just add up uh, different results. You can have slightly different these things, but you basically do some kind of a concatenation of all the results. And this is very expensive, especially because 3x3 three three and 5x5 five five convolutions can get pretty expensive. And which is why we have the actual implementation of our Inception Volume 1. So this is a very interesting one. So if you look at the screen, uh, you, should, you can't see my moist point, pointer, but basically the one by one and the three, uh, before the three by three and the five by five convolutions were the very expensive ones. So we add a one by one convolution just before we feed that. So our layer goes through a one by one convolution and the, the output of these go to the three by three and five by five. And the reason for that is uh, this way we pass a much, uh, we pass a much lower dimensional data to our actual expensive process. So it, it reduces the costs quite significantly. Mathematically, it's been shown to be like orders of magnitude, like 20 times or something lesser. Uh, you can check out the exact details, but uh, by doing a one by one convolution before a three by three convolution, you're, you're reducing the size, you're reducing the overall complexity and the number of operations you have to perform on your data. And now you might be wondering, wait, you mentioned that max pooling is a downsampling algorithm. So why is a one by one convolution being done after that? Like what purpose though would that serve? And the purpose that serves is basically dimension, uh, dimensionality matching. So if you can see here, we have a one by one convolution in every layer. We have it, we have it by itself. We have it before the three by three and the five by five. And so if we just pass the three by three max pooling directly, you might have a different dimensionality of data. And also, uh, by having a one by one convolution passed into the concatenation, it, it kind of makes it very uniform. So that's basically it. And you obviously don't want the one by one before the th max pooling, because as mentioned, max pooling is a downsampling algorithm. So you want to give it as an HD image so it gives you the best abstraction. Otherwise, you might get a very corrupt or a very useless kind of an uh, high uh, dem watered down version, you know. So now we're going to talk about Google Net, and it's actually spelled that way, that is not a typo. And this is the network that the team actually designed by stacking multiple inception modules onto each other and adding some certain other things. Mm -hmm. So you can th these are the total number of things. As we can see, this includes a lot of features. So you can read this at your own time. And obviously the paper will be linked below, so any details that you feel I'm glossing over you can feel free to look at or just uh, leave uh, in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to them. But back to this, so as you can see this is the whole layer and that is a huge layer. So it's 27 layers deep but it's 22 without the pooling and the other stuff. So that's a pretty big layer and uh, you, this also gets very you know expensive comparatively speaking but uh, like it's very expensive overall, but compared to VGGNet, which is 40 layers or something, this is still relatively cheap. But here's, here's where we get back to the vanishing gradient problem I mentioned. So, uh, as you, so when we do have any kind of a very deep neural network, what you have is basically a list of n derivatives. So for, n, for a layer of uh, n hidden layers for a number of n hidden layers, we'd have n, n derivatives multiplied into each other. And if, you're, if the value of your derivatives gets smaller at every step, then what's happening is very closely, it can get to, it can get to zero very quickly, which is why the gradient just vanishes. It just tends to, you know, just w go away. I'm sorry for that. YouTube, for some reason, is deciding now is the best time to show me notifications. But yes, um, that is the way vanishing gradient problem. Uh, we have basically 22 layers. So because uh, 22 is the number of uh, different neurons 
basically grad, uh, gradient is being passed through 22 different layers. So at every layer, if your derivative is getting just a little bit smaller, then at the end of your last layer, uh, at the middle layer, like by the 10th layer or something, you might have a value that's very close to zero, which, which becomes a problem because then you're not passing meaningful data into the next, you're not backpropagating meaningful data. And uh, there's actually a flip side to this that's called the exploding gradient problem. So when your data is just increasing slightly, like instead of a one, if your normal gradient would be one, if the increases like 1.1, 1 .1, which is a or 10 percent increase, which might not seem a lot for one or two or even five layers, but uh, if you have a thing of 40 layers, then this gradient can just explode, and that can really mess with your learning and uh, training process. Now, so that is the vanishing gradient uh, slash exploding gradient problem in a nutshell, and the way this team avoids it is. As if you can see like the pink boxes that I've circled out towards the edge, like in the actual image they're to the right, but uh, in our image because uh, it's too long horizontally, we've, we've basically flipped it 90 degrees. So it's to the bottom. You can see that I've pointed out uh, two different um, auxiliary layers. And these, these are basically just two new uh, classifiers to, be, uh, to kind of re-inject more data. So it's like the vanishing gradient, the gradient's getting very small, so it gets to these auxiliary classifiers, and then they, the gradient gets boosted again, so it can go through the rest of the network without a problem. Why they picked these specific layers, they didn't tell us, but um, in the end of the day, I'm sure they had the reasons, because this thing did perform very well. And that's about it. And uh, the end result, as uh, stated, it performed very well. So the ILS VRC 2014 detection and classification challenges are both very, are typically very, you know, prestigious. And um, our Google Net beat, beat everything there by quite a margin. So, you know, yay to that. And more than that, it also had a much more longstanding impact that it showed uh, data scientists that just blindly adding, you know, new like just blindly making very deep and very strongly connected neural networks wasn't beneficial and you were just increasing your costs. So from, the, from this point onwards, they actually, a lot more research went into what is called neural architecture search, which is how do we automate the data and the neural network building. And there is actually a very interesting article that I will be linking below. Be sure to check that out. But you can see the results, it did very well. And now uh, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If there's any topics you're interested in, feel free to let, get in touch with through any of the means below and let me know. This was actually requested by one of our followers on Twitter. So be sure to follow us if you'd like to. You know, I'm always posting like little snapshots of information there and that might be interesting to you. Uh, if, you're, if you don't want to miss out on one free stock and the uh, insane stock market lately that's going on do use my robin hood link below you know we both get a free stock so you're basically just losing out on the st american stock market if you're not joining with robin hood and that's about it thank you uh, let me know what topics you want done next